Let's bring in now the member for Hinkler, Nationals MP Keith Pitt. Great to see you. This is Australia Day. What's the reaction been from your constituents? I'm, I'm not sure you've picked up much feedback yet, but this backflip on the tax cuts. Many of your, many of your constituents, many of your voters will benefit from a higher tax cut. Wouldn't uh, that be correct as opposed to the original plan? Well, I think we better look at the facts here, Kieran, uh, and the facts are these. Uh, the lower middle income tax offset, $1,500, was stolen from 51,000 of my constituents, hard-working, tax-paying constituents. So under Treasurer Jim Chalmers, previously under us, they got 1500 then they went to zero, and now Mr Chalmers is giving them back some $900, and he's strutting around like he deserves a medal and a round of applause. Well, I don't think they're that silly. Uh, they know they've been dudded, and on the back of that, the Prime Minister and Mr Chalmers have broken their commitments, which they gave more than 100 times to commit to stage three. And for those indi individuals who are impacted, I mean, they've made plans and commitments. This was legislated, it was law. They knew it was coming and now it's not. Do you believe that the coalition should vote against the changes in the parliament? It's, it's, hard, it's a hard position because you don't want to block your constituents getting a tax cut as well. H how do you navigate that? I think we should stick to the commitments that we made. Uh, we legislated them with Labor support, mind you, uh, and the time for Labor to make this noise was when it was going through the Parliament then, but it wasn't politically convenient for them, and now it's not politically convenient again. Uh, but in terms of the proposal, we're yet to see the final detail, uh, and we'll go through the same process we always do, Kieran. It'll go through the joint party room, there'll be discussion with my colleagues, uh, we'll adopt a position, uh, and that yet, that's yet to be determined. It is yet to be determined. The politics of it aren't, really. We know where it's heading. You're saying that, they, that your, your opposition leader said there should be an early election over this, that it's a betrayal of voters. I, I understand the point that's being made, and it was a clear broken promise on what was said before the election, but given just under 90% of taxpayers will get more under this plan than under the original design, it complicates the politics, doesn't it? Well, let's look at the broken promises first. This Labor government's got form. Uh, they committed to lower mortgages. Broken. They committed to lower cost of living. Broken. They committed to lower electricity prices. Broken. And now stage three tax cuts that they voted for in the Parliament, both the House and the Senate, well, they're walking away from that. They're breaking that promise as well. I don't think the Australian people will forget. Uh, and you need to have trust in your government. That trust is gone. And if we look at what happened to Julia Gillard, well, she called an election in January of 2013 for September that year. I mean, Anthony Albanese this morning says, oh, you can't have one till after August 8th. Well, there's the precedent. A previous Labor Prime Minister set the election and he should go to a campaign and ask the people for their support. It is a key turning point in this electoral cycle, no doubt about it. I, I don't think there'll be any early election, but we're not far away from the next one anyway, likely March of next year or thereabouts. This will be the key issue. And the dividing line is clear. You've got to try and convince people that they've been dudded while they're getting some... 90% are getting more cash. It, again, I put it to you, that, that complicates the politics. Politics is always complicated, Kieran. That, that's the game that we're in. <laughs> but the reality here, once again, true. is really straightforward. Very true. Uh, it, it is the federal Labor government's policies that are driving the cost of living crisis, whether it's the safeguard mechanism, whether it's the challenges on inflation, whether it's the fact the only commitments that they continue to deliver are the ones for the unions. All of these are impacting uh, every individual who's trying to get by every week uh, and meet their own commitments. Uh, and yet here we see more broken promises from a government that simply can't tell the truth and the Australian people know it. Yeah. Just quickly, almost out of time, but we're seeing a number of Invasion Day rallies around the nation. You know the debate as well as, as I do around our National Day. Well, how do you look at the way that this discussion is carried out every Australia Day? Uh, well, firstly, I think it's unnecessary. I, I support people's right to protest. They, they have that entitlement, and I've got no issues with that uh, whatsoever. But I'll tell you what I want to do for the rest of Australia Day, Kieran, after I finish speaking to you, and that's get in, I think, slip on the thongs and the shorts and watch all of those Australians turn out at the Gabba, at the test today, waving their Australian flag in their Australian bucket hats, celebrating their country and cheering for Australia. 
That's what I'll be doing, mate, and that's what this country means to me. Just as we were talking, we're seeing these pictures. This is out the front of Parliament House, an Invasion Day rally that's come up uh, to the doors. You, you say that this is, this is part of democracy, that they have every right to do that on, on Australia Day? Uh, provided it's lawful and they're not setting things on fire, breaking law, injuring and assaulting people, they're entitled to their view, just as the overwhelming majority of Australians don't agree with them. And they think this is a great day, it's a day to celebrate our nation, uh, and a lot of this stuff is quite simply just unnecessary. And if I look at what happened on the ABC this morning, Karen, well, it's no longer our ABC, it's their ABC. It's the ABC for the activists uh, and the activist minorities, and I think that's a great shame. Keith Pitt, thank you very much for your time on Australia Day and I'll let you go and uh, prepare for an afternoon watching the cricket from the Gabba. It should be a good day's play. Talk to you soon. Uh, absolutely. Thanks, Kieran.